We are going to be looking at zeros of polynomial functions. Zeros can tell us a lot of information about the polynomial in terms of its graph. So, for instance, if your function is already listed in factored form, so let's say that I have x plus 3, x plus 1, and x minus 2. Well, looking at this, the zeros of the polynomial function are going to be when we set each factor equal to 0. So that means that this is going to be my zeros are located at negative 3, negative 1, and at 2. Okay, so from this information, we can use what's called a sign chart in order to determine where the graph is negative, positive, and kind of give us an idea of what it's going to look like. So with our sign chart, our sign chart is going to be using those zero numbers, so negative 3, negative 1, and 2. And then we're going to list down this side our factors. So we had originally x plus 3, x plus 1, and x minus 2. So what we do from this, I did this a little bit off on my vertical ones. I'm sorry for those of you that have already drawn this in. So let's go negative 3, negative 1, and 2. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to pick a number, and we're going left to right. So we're going to pick a number that's left of that negative 3 value. These are numbers that you can pick yourself. It does not matter what you pick. It's just a number left of negative 3. So I'm going to pick negative 4. What you're going to do is you're going to take this negative 4 and substitute it into the x spots of each one of those factors and determine whether it's positive or negative. So if I take negative 4 plus 3, that's going to give me a negative number. You don't need to worry about what the actual number is because if you pick a number different than me, it could be um, a different number, but the, the point is it's negative. So if I take negative 4 plus 1, I still result with a negative number. Negative 4 minus 2 results in a negative number. Now I'm going to pick a number that's between negative 3 and negative 1. So in my case, I'm going to pick negative 2. Same process. I'm going to take that negative 2 and substitute it into my factors. Um, the result for the first one is going to be negative, negative, Actually, I take that back. Negative 2 plus 3 is a positive number. Some of you probably caught that. Negative 2 plus 1 is still a negative. Negative 2 minus 2 is going to be negative. Now, picking a number between negative 1 and 2, I'm going to go with 0. So I have a positive, positive, negative. And then I need one more number. I need it to the right of 2, so I'm going to pick 3. So I get a positive, positive, positive. So here's what this information tells us. Since we are technically, our function is technically multiplying, I'm going to look at my red column here. I have a negative times a negative times a negative, which is going to result in a negative. Looking at my green column, I have a positive times a negative times a negative. It's going to result in a positive. Blue column is going to be negative. Purple column there is going to be positive. What this means, this means that my graph, which has zeros located at negative 3, at negative 1, and at 2, my graph then, if I'm looking at this, is negative until it hits that negative 3. 
So my graph is below the x-axis somehow until it reaches negative 3. From negative 3 to 1, it's in the positive area or above the x-axis. So it's going to look something like this. It might be slightly different. Now for the blue, my graph is going to switch below the x-axis from negative 1 to 2. Something like this. This is just a rough estimate. This doesn't mean that it's precise. Now, from 2 on, it's supposed to be above the x-axis. So my graph is going to be based off of where those zeros are located and whether my graph is negative, positive, and that kind of stuff, based on my sign chart. Now, the next thing is you could have what is called a multiplicity. What this means, this means that the zero occurs more than once. Okay, so that kind of math jargon there. If I were to have x plus 3 squared, this means that I have a multiplicity of 2. So what that really means is x equals negative 3 occurs twice because of that exponent. Now, whatever that exponent is, is your multiplicity, that tells you how many times it's going to occur. Something unique about these multiplicities, if the multiplicity is even, then your graph is going to touch the x-axis, but not cross it. So it touches x-axis and is a min or max. If your multiplicity is odd, it's going to cross the x-axis. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in class when we're looking at an actual graph. But just so you're aware, that's something to note based on the graphics. So for instance, if I had f of x equals 3x minus 1 to the power 4 and x plus 3 to the power of 2, I know right now I set those equal to 0, my factors x equals one-third, and it has a multiplicity of four because of that exponent. My second one, this x plus three equals zero is going to be result in x equals negative three with a multiplicity of two. Okay, not so bad. You're finding your zeros, checking out the exponent and what it means. The last thing that we need to talk about are when you potentially have Real versus complex. Now, a complex root, remember, is when we have an I or an imaginary number. A real root is when you actually get a number without that I, okay? So remember that the number of roots is determined by your degree or your highest exponent. So sometimes you might see that your x-axis, it crosses once, but it's an x cubed. That means that you have two complex roots. Well, how do you find those? Let's talk about it with an example here. Let's say, for instance, that I have a function that is 2x cubed minus 8x squared plus 9x minus 9. Now, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to graph this to find graph to find real roots. Okay, so I'm going to graph this on Desmos. I won't show it to you just because I'm in Smart Board Recorder and not actually um, not on Desmos. I can't switch between. But I will tell you this: that the first root that we find off of the graph is going to be x equals 3. 
So once you find a root, your second step is to do synthetic division in order to get the polynomial down to an x squared. And the reason why is because if you get it down to an x squared, you could then use the quadratic formula, you could use completing the square, you could use numerous things. But I'm going to go ahead and work with my synthetic division. So I have 3, 2, negative 8, 9, and negative 9. Go through, do my synthetic division. I'm going to go through this quickly since we've already talked about it. Um, so looking at this, I'm just doing my multiplication and my addition there. If it truly is a root, you should end up with a remainder of 0, which in this case I do. So I have 2x squared minus 2x plus 3. So step 3 is to solve 4x using the quadratic formula. All right, some of you might need a refresher on the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So I'm just going to substitute that right in in order to solve for my x. Okay, right, remember when we talked about the quadratic formula, you need to simplify underneath the root first. So I'm going to get x equals plus 2 plus or minus the square root. Um, underneath the root, I would have uh, 4 minus 20. No, 4 minus 24 and then minus that would give me the negative 20 over 4. And we can't have, remember, we can't have that negative square root of 20, so we got to simplify that using our imaginary numbers. And we would get 2i square root 5 over 4. In case you're wondering how I went from here to here, here's my work for this. Square root of negative 20 breaks down into negative 4 and square root 5, which then, because we have a negative there, results in an i with the 2. Okay, one last step. I'm going to simplify this because they're all three numbers are divisible by 1. So x equals 1 plus or minus 1i square root 5 over 2. And those are my last roots. Those are my complex roots. So using your graph and your sign chart, you can determine a lot of information about polynomials.